Well, hello. It is your host, Todd Beardsley, joined, as always, by Claire Reynolds, Esquire. Hi. Hello, Claire. Uh, and this is episode 40 for the big 4 <laughs> That storied podcast milestone. Today we're going to be discussing... Over the hill. <laughs> I know, we could get those black balloons out. Uh-huh. We're going to be discussing the shunned house. And I am excited about this episode. Uh, the very eagle-eared, bat-eared. What's good, what's, what's good hearing? What animal has good hearing? It's bats. I'd say like... I don't know, like a fox, maybe? Fox-eared listeners (laughs) may notice slightly different acoustics uh, because we are in a hotel in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, And that's where everybody goes for their 40th episode of their podcast. That's right. (laughs) I don't know anything about Shreveport. Uh, Claire, I don't think you know anything about Shreveport other than what we've learned in the last 12 hours. Well, true blood. The only thing we know is is that this is the home of Eric Northman and the Fantasia Bar, which we have seen neither of. Very disappointing. It is. (laughs) It closed closed over COVID. It closed for COVID. Um, I I did look on Wikipedia and the purpose of Shreveport. It was, um, it was, it was, going to be built by the the shreve city committee mm. I get, or shreve city corporation mm. uh, as a port of entry into the nation of texas <sighs> and that didn't last very long so <laughs> kind it's of still pretty much its own country mm-hmm. yeah lawlessness reigns supreme it does so yeah so we are refugees in louisiana yeah uh, from texas right now but anyway also i'd like before we get started yes I'd like to point out, uh-huh. I'd give a shout out to a very happy 75th birthday to my dad. 75, wow. Mm-hmm. That's that's a lot. That's way more than 40. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going to be thrilled to hear us point that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just glad I didn't live to see this day. <laughs> Three quarters of a century. That's right. Neat. Well, this is a this is a story kind of about a dad, sort of it's a dad figure, I guess. It's his uncle, honey. I know it's his uncle. <laughs> it's a dad figure. Um, I mean, I wouldn't even say the story. I would say the last quarter of the story is about the, <laughs> the rest of it is just a little bit of a slog. Uh huh. I'll give you that. Shunt House is a little bit longer. It was originally intended. So Lovecraft wrote this, according to reports. Uh, in 1924. No, I love how he referred to the 40s, the mm-hmm. late 40s. The late 40s, yes. <laughs> 1840s. Uh-huh. And um, it wasn't published, though, until uh, I, I want to say 1937 is what I think I said. Um in Weird Tales, it was it was much much later between writing and publishing. It was first intended to be like its own kind of novella, um, like a bound edition, and didn't go great as most of <laughs> Lovecraft's independent publishing uh, adventures went. He did end up publishing, I think, The Mountains of Madness to some very minor success, but other than that, almost everything he wrote were was picked up by magazines uh, and not sold as books. So. Uh, but that's okay because uh, there is a Kickstarter, which I will link to in the show notes, called The Shunned House, colon, Recluse Replica. And it is a, uh, it comes from the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society, of which I am a member. That's right. <laughs> and uh, Helios House Press. And they have this Kickstarter up. I don't understand how Kickstarters work. Like after they're already funded, there's still options available to like buy the extremely expensive um, 350 pound version <laughs> and pound sterling in British, not 350 pounds. Right, it weighs, weighs, it weighs 350. <laughs> Very large book. It is the Whipple edition of the Shunned House. You can go, I guess you can buy it. I don't know. Um, but huh. I'll put a link in the show notes and you can figure it out. That is pricey. It is pricey. It is put together by like four different artisans in four different countries oh, i think that's kind of cool though and it's all handmade and yeah oh that's neat it's i like that kind yeah of stuff. it's very bookbindy kind of stuff it's yeah. incredibly nerdy and it is 
kind of a fulfillment of like what Lovecraft wanted for this story, which is kind of nice yeah. uh, that the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society has done that for him um, post mortem. <laughs> so <laughs> it's been very post mortem. <laughs> yes, um, but anyway, let's um, let's talk about this story. All right. All right. Uh, it's called the Shunned House. You might expect that this is a haunted house story, and you would be right. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, think it's, it's a haunted ha- house. I think it's a haunted house story. Yeah. Uh, part one. I mean, the whole story is about the house. The whole story is about the house. Incidentally, this house, um, the house where it takes place is a real place. Uh, It's on Benefit Street in Providence. It is one of the most easy to find locations (laughs) in in Lovecraft lore. Uh, If you go to Providence, you can you can visit the street address. Do people live there? Uh, Yes. I I assume the address is not. The house. The address is not the house. The house, it's uh, the actual physical house, as described, uh-huh. is in New Jersey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, a okay. little harder to find. I see. Um, All right. But it, it... He just chose an address. The, well, the house in Providence on Benefit Street, uh, according to his letters, this house on Benefit Street reminds him of a house in New Jersey that he's been to. Um, and so, it, that's why he sets it there, basically. Okay. Um, so it's it's kind of close. Um, okay. I really like the um, the the art that came with the story in the original Weird Tales. It's very um, uh, Edward Gorey. It's very mi- it's not Edward Gorey personally, but it right. lo- it's Edward Gorey style. It's very kind of mystery. Check it out. The old fashioned sharing. Yeah, the old fashioned sharing sure. of ter- turning oh, the yeah, monitor. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, it's it's very very creepy. Oh, deliciously macabre. And that house as described. Crepe paper. (laughs) It's crepe. (laughs) That house as described in the story um, is the one in New Jersey. It does not look like the one on Benefit Street. But um, it's interesting because it's in Providence. That's one of the few stories that takes place in Providence for real and not Arkham. Um, I think Call of Cthulhu also starts in Providence at one point. And that may be it. I don't know of many other stories of his that actually take place in Providence and not Arkham or Boston or, you know, Antarctica <laughs> or Oklahoma or whatever. We open with uh, a note a note about irony, <laughs> I think. Go ahead. Yes. No, no, no. That's yeah. it. That's all. It's a note about irony in that um, Edgar Allan Poe uh, walked by this house every day and never and the ironic thing is, is that he didn't know about that now i have a little bit of a problem with this usage of the word irony yeah. i think it's oh, more yeah. of a coincidence yeah yeah <laughs> i just want to point out i don't know if it was intended mm-hmm. as a uh, passive aggressive dig at poe but like referring to his unsuccessful wooing of the <laughs> gifted poetess mrs whitman <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, well, <laughs> he does. He didn't have Poe does not have, have much game. <laughs> I don't want to be the one to say it. Me, right. Howard Phillips Lovecraft, lo- noted ladies' right, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody thought that guy was so cool, right. but couldn't snag Mrs. Whitman. Nope, nope. Okay. I don't. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Um, uh, and so basically, uh, part one, he talks a lot about the architecture of the house <laughs> uh-huh. and it's, um, it's a it's lot about kind of a lot. One, two, three, four paragraphs of description. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're really into like 17th century architecture, this is the section for you. Anyway, moving on to part two, uh, in part two, we meet Dr. Elahu Whipple, um, couple things about Dr. Whipple that I would like to point out. A, uh, he's described as white-haired and kind of old-fashioned. Oh, my God, is he Doc Brown? He is, is basically, <laughs> this is what I'm saying, is that the unnamed narrator may be Marty McFly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it does say he's a sane, conservative physician of the old school. Uh-huh. So I don't know if I would describe Doc Brown as that. But, no, you're right. This is absolutely. This Marty. is a much older Why didn't you friend. Tell me this? I, now, now I, this is, yeah. Why didn't I tell you this? I saved yeah, over the you're podcast. Right, you're right. Yes. You silly goose. Uh, they, I have been on a, a back I've been on a back to the future kick for 
I don't know, four or five days. This is just how Todd is. That's just how I roll. If he, it's like, that's oh, how if he I rolls. Want, if there's a movie he wants to watch, he will just watch it. Yeah, from like 1985. As Doesn't long matter. as it's already available on Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been really into Back to the Future lately. And um, and I am struck by the, the unanswered question in Back to the Future of how does Marty McFly know Doc Brown? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> never addressed, Indeed. never discussed. Shout out to John Mulaney if you're yes. listening. I assume you are. <laughs> oh, hey, John. Uh, yeah, he, he, John, John Mulaney mentions this as well. But a like, it, it did nuclear physicist. <laughs> it, it did occur to me while watching it. But anyway, so Doc Brown, which is what, how, what we're going to call Dr. Whipple now. <laughs> um, Doc Whipple. Doc Whipple. Um, he is a historian, and he didn't want to like tell the narrator about Marty about the house when he was a kid, like a little kid, because, like, too scary, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but then this kid just kept pastoring him and pastoring him and w- showed a lot of interest. And so Doc Whipple is like, let me show you. And then he <laughs> <laughs> he does the, the Charlie Day uh-huh. style. Like, <laughs> here's everything ever written or known about this house. And the, <laughs> yes. and the families that live here. Yeah, there's yarn to, yeah. <laughs> everywhere. There's newspaper clippings. There's, like, he is a, an expert on this <laughs> one address in Providence, Rhode Island. All of this is kind of told as like from I guess from the point of view of Dr. Whipple like if you were going to show this in a movie like if you were going to shoot this as a movie right yeah it would be Dr. Whipple saying like oh let me tell you about this house yeah and then over the years we would watch like an hour right of just vignettes people people dying people dying consumption and stuff and all through like the 18th century up through the 20th century every the, this house is cursed <laughs> this house is cursed this place is cursed damn it <laughs> and um and it turns out it's all because well hang on <laughs> do we even know that much in part 2 i don't think we do part no. 3 just keeps going right part 2 is just is just it's just all, the history list of all the people that died. It's a lot of genealogy and yeah. a lot of history. It ends up with like a bunch of people are dying, and then yes. part three goes even further back, uh-huh. right? And then, and then you figure out that we're like, oh, it's it's that evil roulette. It's, it's the French people, right? And so they are Huguenots yes. um, who are escaping persecution in France, as Huguenots are wont to do in the <laughs> 16th century, 17th century, I guess. Um, and one of them is named Roulet, uh, who is connected with a folkloric um, character in, in French folklore uh, of, of a werewolf. Um, the, the Roulets were all murdered, except for, I is guess, that this a loop guru. A loop garou. A loop garou. <laughs> That's right, because we're in La- Louisiana. <laughs> 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 we, can, we should be speaking more French. Um, but yeah, this one relay got away and uh, ended up in America building a house. And then I, gu- I guess things, ha- I don't really remember what happens in this, but what it ends up happening is that this house gets built on the relay cemetery, the family, the family plot, basically. And it's like, oh, well. You moved the headstones. <laughs> but you never <laughs> moved the bodies. You son of a bitch, you left the bodies and you only moved the headstones. You only moved the headstones. <laughs> So yeah, so another, <laughs> I I would say Spielberg connection, <laughs> even though Poltergeist <laughs> is not directed by Spielberg, and neither is Back to the Future, but Spielberg produced both of them. So that's kind of the idea, right? And then I think in part three, there's a mention of the fungus, the weird fungus in the basement. Yeah, he's explaining That's where how, that comes up. Like, yeah, one of the things that everyone is so creeped out by this house is that, you know, when they were kids, they would break in, and it was a weird fungus in the basement that would kind of phosphoresce i guess Mm -hmm. into Mm -hmm. the shape of a person it would be it's it's a very like um like corpse light uh will of the wisp kind of style of haunting i would say it's like kind of natural world something you would expect out of like irish folklore right yeah um but it, it it kind of bubbles up from this fungus and then escapes through the chimney and then i guess goes and does evil or something whatever um but there is a i think in part three is introduced the the queerly anthropomorphic shape 
of the of, of one of these fungus patches where you can kind of see the outline of a person if you squint right right yeah so okay so it's a so it's a mushroom ghost and that's cool. which i like that th- this was a little different than your usual like werewolf vampire yeah ghost. yeah it's not just like a ghost with chains. and he says that very i think yeah. back in part one it's like this is not a ghost story about yeah. like chains and moans and yeah. you know cold cold breezes it's, and stuff it's about mush it's more like um <laughs> the word i'm looking for what what was that movie with natalie portman it was a book oh um um, um annihilation annihilation yeah. yes yes this is this does have an annihilation slash um girl with all the gifts kind of feel yeah slash it's about the the righteous gemstones no <laughs> it's about a fungus succession silly. no <laughs> hang on it's um the last of us <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. last of okay. us is all very fun funguses okay. are so hot right now and yeah. lovecraft is on this 100 years it ago <laughs> and <laughs> funguses are hot yeah and by the way if you want like a good fungus trilogy th- i mean i think we just named it and it is called uh girl with all the gifts annihilation last of us <laughs> last of us of course is 12 hours long because it's i mean HBS. they're not they're not <laughs> trilogies annihilation itself is a trilogy yeah yeah, yeah. it's a book of i just mean the like, movies oh okay you just be like if you want to go on a fungus horror kick okay got it got it and girl with all the gifts is i as far as i can tell is still kind of unsung in america it was like a kind of a big deal horror movie in the uk yeah um very enjoyable but it's so good those zombie that zombie girl is just like just so i know so polite. just <laughs> yeah, i know Todd is in dad love with uh-huh. this yeah polite want, zombie girl i want this kid to be my kid <laughs> <laughs> She's just like she never talks back. Morning class. Good morning. It's just mm-hmm. She's just polite. She Follows does instruction. Uh, and when needed, will go on a murderous Has some rampage. Gumption. Has yes. some gumption, <laughs> which I like. I like grit. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so uh, Doc Whipple and Marty. Say like, well, let's get to the bottom of this. We're gonna go to this house and we're gonna camp out. Yeah, this is where it starts to get. And good. this is where it starts getting good, right? Yeah. Like, I couldn't. And this is the part. I'll I'll put a pin in that. But there's a lot of background, a lot of like, <laughs> we're playing yeah. some Call of Cthulhu now, right? Yeah. In, in real life. Yeah. And so there's a lot of library use, <laughs> yes. skill checks going on yeah. here to find old newspapers and learn things about the history of the house uh-huh. and blah, 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 and who lived there and how they died and why they died. And, oh, it turns out sometimes people get, like, the consumption and start speaking French for some reason. How weird. And... <laughs> Uh, and then part four, they're like, all right, we're going there. We're going there. We're camping out. Uh-huh. We've got cots. We've got um, provisions. Yeah. We've got torches. Yeah. And we this have This is my favorite part. Flamethrowers. Okay. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> we devised two weapons to fight it. And then he describes some kind of like science-y shit. Mm-hmm. And then Which he's I, like. I can talk about. <laughs> and a pair of military flamethrowers. <laughs> and just in case. <laughs> A flamethrower. Which don't ever get used, by the way. Oh, yeah. They are sitting <laughs> idle in the corner. <laughs> so um, they bring these things called crooks tubes, which I you know, learned all about uh, in Wikipedia. And crooks tubes are early cathode ray tubes. And basically, they do th- they're basically useful for um, demonstrating some electromagnetic properties. Uh, they... <laughs> there, there was some experimentation in, hey, can we get the electron ray to get out of the tube, right? <laughs> and Crook's tubes have a range of about two millimeters. <laughs> so <laughs> you'd have to be pretty close to this thing okay. to, like, see if this, you know, this, this electromagnetic kind of ray gun would work on it. Um, I think Lovecraft was taking some liberties with this. But he did say, it, it does say explicitly, like, when they see like this yellow apparition start showing up again from the mushrooms, like near the near the uh, fireplace that's in the basement, I guess they shoot it with the crooks um, the crooks tube, and it does nothing. Yeah, it's like, well, damn. <laughs> 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 and that part is what really struck me as a very kind of like role playing game part. Yeah. Like they got real yeah. clever. They're like, hey, I just learned about this ray gun uh-huh. you could buy in the 1920s. And, <laughs> and the keeper is like, sure, yeah, try it. Why not? <laughs> it does nothing, but sure, maybe. <laughs> I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. And so. I like how he points out our cellar vigil began at 10 p.m. 
daylight saving time. Yeah. Like you had to specify that. Oh, well, it would have been a new thing. So he writes it in 1924. Daylight saving time doesn't come to America until the middle of World War One. So this would have been oh, okay. this would have been a fairly recent okay. thing to like be explicit about. <laughs> Probably because okay. like he wants to he wants to note like you know, the position of the sun like Definitely is it dark out or not yeah. right and uh, yeah uh, now that said daylight saving time is a plot by the German Kaiser to hamstring western industry and we should be done with it now it is the worst <laughs> fucking thing ever i have a i have a standing meeting in tokyo every other week and every time the t- clock changes no one knows when this meeting is because <laughs> japan does not observe Just, any yeah. daylight saving time <laughs> ever it's so annoying <sighs> god we have to get rid of that stupid thing every every six months i get I, get all bent up like yes there are yes. other things that we can be doing <laughs> and our, our fine legislative bodies uh-huh. around america could be doing to make life better <laughs> this i feel like is an easy win yeah uh, <laughs> no one likes it the, everyone hates it uh, as far as i can tell and there's like this whole theory it's like it's a plot now by like the candy companies so halloween can can be more pleasant i guess because it has something to do with october and and like no, that, how, how it doesn't matter. The candy companies have no yeah. interest in this. No. The the most credible source no, I big, could see big for candy's ha- got other problems. Mm-hmm. The most credible source I saw about why we still have daylight saving time is because uh, golf. Because <laughs> <laughs> in the winter you get an extra hour to play golf. <laughs> But you don't. But you actually That's don't. And, like, thing. just get over it. Right. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Write your congressperson and be done with daylight saving time. It's so dumb. <laughs> all right. So uh, the Crooks tube doesn't work at all on this yellow fungus ghost. Um, and they're like, dang. And then what happens? Then they go to bed. Yes. <laughs> and they're yes. like, well, that didn't yeah. work. Yeah. And it went up the chimney, never to be seen again, presumably. So Dr. Whipple's like, or I'm sorry, Doc Whipple, he takes a nap and Marty is taking the first, first, <laughs> first watch. And Dr. Whipple like thrashes around and he starts muttering in French and oh no, like he's getting, definitely getting possessed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and Marty's doing nothing about it. I know, he's just standing there like, <laughs> Whoa, Wow, weird. Uh, and then he wakes up and he's like, hey, I had this crazy dream that I was like in a hole and a bunch of faces were looking at me and the faces all kind of look like the Harris family who all lived here. Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. And, um, which I like. I, li- I actually do like that. And I think like if you were to shoot this as a movie, like that could come up. Like you spend the first hour of the movie like going over the Harris family and having these little vignettes. And then, like, smash cut, back in the house, <laughs> present day, 1924 or whatever. And, um, and then have this kind of dream yeah. sequence. It's kind of like a dream possession almost, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, well, whatever. And then, um, then Marty goes, to, goes takes a nap, mm-hmm. but then he wakes up. Part five. He goes and to sleep. Doc Whipple is screaming and then also melting. <laughs> yes. Which is not, none of the people that they have described before had melted. No. Like all the people that died in this house, nobody melted. I don't it, understand why Doc Whipple is They melting. die, yeah, they die from like blood loss yeah. for starters. You know, they die from like hyperanemia. Yeah, like. Because of vampire. Right. And. <laughs> And, but it's the the monster here, like for most of the book, I'm convinced, oh, this is some kind of vampire, right? Because there's a lot of anemia talk and a mm-hmm. lot of like, and it's like, okay, well, it's a vampire who like lives in the basement. As far as I can tell, it's like just kind of a ghosty vampire, ghosty it's fungus vampire. Mushroom, mushroom yeah. vampire werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, hey, it's a Lovecraftian monster. Mm-hmm. It is beyond all yeah, comprehension. that's right. Um, so Marty wakes up. Uh, sees Doc Whipple for reeking out. He's getting all melty. He's got claws. He comes at him, um, you know, and that doesn't work out at all. So he runs away and he's like, Yeah, he's like, Bye, Uncle. I am out. See you. 
So he <laughs> books it and he goes home. And he's like, man, that sucked. Yep. And too bad my uncle just melted. <laughs> too bad my my favorite uncle, my father <laughs> figure of an uncle who I love very much, is now a melty spot in the basement, which I think is what kicks him over into this like, well, we got to go in there. Dun, 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 That's right. Dun, 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 dun. He's got to get a plan and it's got to come together. <laughs> and he, so I mean, he, it's a little late to save your uncle. But. Right, but vengeance. So he gets on the phone. <laughs> yes. And he calls, what, the dry goods store? I don't know. Yeah. You go. Yeah. You, no, this, no way. I you told me it. this was your gotta, favorite part. Yeah, I got it, but I can't yeah. find it. Now I got it. That's okay. I can edit. And taking my hat, I set out for home where I bathed, ate, and gave by telephone an order for a pickaxe, a spade, <laughs> a military gas mask, and six carboys of sulfuric acid, all to be delivered the next morning. That's right. Like, like, like Amazon could not do that. No. To this day. So, <laughs> and I didn't know what a carboy was, and so I've I li- heard it, but I, I don't know. Yeah. So the be- the easiest way to describe it is a water cooler bottle. That's okay. a carboy. Okay. So they're big. They're like. It's not a 55 gallon drum, okay. but it's like 20 ish gallons. Okay. Tends to be in there. And they're, they're big and they're made of plastic. So it's fine for sulfuric acid, as we all have learned from Breaking Bad. Uh huh. <laughs> and yeah, so he gets a, a shit ton of acid. Uh huh. That seems to be the, the the meat of the plan here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm just trying to mention the guy on the other end of the phone, like, uh huh, right? Uh huh. Got it. Yep. Hey, we got another murder kit that we need, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and so he takes, he lugs all the stuff back to the house and he starts digging and he digs and digs and digs and he finds this like weird spongy surface down there. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was, again, it was very not what I was expecting because I yeah. was expecting like, oh. Was, I was expecting it, like, uh, yeah, a, a vampire or something, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. No, he finds a gigantic elbow yes. it turns out <laughs> when you're a lovecraft monster and you live a long time you just get bigger and bigger and bigger so i believe that this is one of the original roulets if not the original yeah. roulet who has been sneaking out at night being a ghost vampire yeah and just every time he feeds he gets a little bit bigger <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I didn't catch that. How big is he supposed to be? Oh, he finds this this cylindrical tube that's like two feet across, and it's got a bend in the middle, oh. and that's the elbow. Oh, so it's like I didn't see that. So imagine like okay, the monster that. at the ve- okay. spoiler alert right now, for serious. The monster at the end. Yeah, of the book. Nope, <laughs> not the monster at the end of the book. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I <have the> no. <laughs> No, um, if you have not seen, see, I can't even say, fuck it. Spoiler alert, turn it off if you don't want a spoiler for something. For something, yes. Skip over 10 seconds starting now. I don't know what he's talking about. Cabin in the Woods, the final scene in Cabin in the Woods. Oh, got it. All right, here we are. We're back again. I got that. Okay, spoiler alerts have gotten out of control. That movie came out uh, 10 years ago. 15 years ago, maybe. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's very good, though. And it I doesn't know, really yeah. matter that it's like a thing at the end. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so he finds this, and it's so like it's like a big, big, big dude. And yeah. so he pours all this acid down. Good thing he brought six carboys of it, and it seems to do the job because uh, the fungus all turns into ash. Um, it's not feeding on you know this this giant monster that lives underground that like escapes spectrally every night or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and the acid does the trick. Yep. So, and he does pass out at one point. He's like, oh, damn. (laughs) On the fourth one, I believe. (laughs) He passes out from the fumes, but he gets better. And I'm like, man, if you're passing out from, like, sulfuric acid fumes, you've got, like, major, major lung damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, One of the things I liked about this was that I feel like in so many of his books, his stories there's no hero or mm. i mean and i mean nobody who like saves anybody or anything. like usually he, there's running away yeah right yeah. it's like oh this weird thing that happened yeah. and this time he's like no fuck this i'm yeah. taking a stand uh-huh you took exactly. my doc yeah 
<laughs> I'm taking your elbow. What Marty would do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm melting you. That's right. So he melts them. And it's like, and this part too, like strikes me as very kind of like Call of Cthulhu role play of like, well, you totally blew it on the monster. Yeah. And the PC's like, uh, I want to, I can just go back. Right. Like I can just try again. <laughs> So, I guess, I guess you can try. It's like, yeah, okay, so I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. to roll my credit rating and I'm going to see if I can get a gas mask and some and some shovels exactly. and a whole shit ton of acid. Yes, this is exactly what is happening in the Call of Cthulhu game that Todd is running right now. Where we in did co- not get the monster. No, yeah. We're going so, back for the monster, though. Are you? I don't know. I mean, you guys have to work it out. So, yeah, we're running a Call of Cthulhu game. There's a monster in some caves outside of Wortham, East Texas. Uh, and, um, yeah, they totally didn't do anything with this monster. <laughs> <laughs> They're very outclassed, and they were unprepared. Yeah. And, yeah. But now oh, they know. But now we, they know. And so yeah, I got there very quickly. I'm, I'm hopeful they try to pull a six carboys of acid <laughs> scheme. On the monster that lives in the caves. <laughs> we'll find out, though. <laughs> and, yeah, so the shunned house is no longer shunned. Um, yeah. It'll probably be turned it's, into it's some alley. lame apartments or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's condos. Yeah, it'll, get, it'll become condos. He, he says something along those lines in, in the story. Yeah. Of, like, well, it's probably going to get torn down and turned into, you know. Yeah condos but now they're like birds living there the it's, birds are back it's a disney mm-hmm. rainbows mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and that's it that's the story yeah. so i think i'm with you claire i really liked part four and five mm-hmm. the 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 genealogy could have been compressed <laughs> yeah if i was going to be giving notes on it but it's fine like yeah it's the kind of thing that's very classically Lovecraft. It's like, yeah. oh, let's get real detailed about 200 years of history. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that how You might be wondering how I got here. <laughs> right. And then have a short period of pretty decent action. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So that's, that's the tale. And uh, I guess that's it. I, let's see. I don't think I've gotten much mail lately. I don't know. Let's take a look, shall we? Yes. Yeah, because I recorded this. I was trying to experiment. I recorded it, put it out, um, the reading, and I was wondering if anyone would write in about the reading and say, like, hey, you should talk about blah. You should, or did you ever consider it? Or, like, hey, did you know this, this is like a Marty McFly, Doc Brown relationship or something like that? Nope, nothing like that. <laughs> um, however, oh, I don't think we've been, no, we haven't announced it at all, the URL. So we have another podcast Oh, that's right. Gang. Yes. Well, we've uh, done one episode of another sh- podcast. Sh- <laughs> As of this recording, we've done one episode of another podcast. And it is Hot for Teacher, colon, The Greatest American Hero Watch Party. And you can go to hotforteacher.tv. <laughs> and this is Claire's podcast. This is not my podcast. It's not my she podcast. She runs it. It's, I don't nope, run it. Nope, she calls the I shots. I nothing. She's, she's got the cigar and the, and the business suit with the really big <laughs> shoulder pads. And no. she's telling everybody what to do in the <laughs> podcast factory. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Sell, sell, sell. That's right. It is definitely her podcast. Um, and it's pretty fun. I can see where it's going, and I li- and I am I like it. I think we'll talk a lot more about, like, Gen X stupidness in that one. <laughs> and it'll be, it'll be pretty fun. It'll be fun. We've got one episode out. We're going to record another one at some point. Um, again, the, neither of these podcasts are actually our jobs, so you get them when you get them, <laughs> and you right. like it. You'll like it. All right, uh, and so that. Oh, wait a minute. I do You've have got a mail. Okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> I have a note from our last recording. Okay. It's uh, from our new pal Owen, and he says, "I love listening to the readings, the discussions afterwards." End of message. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Owen. You have, you have cracked the code of how to listen to this podcast. <laughs> this well, welcome, Owen. Yes. Your mysterious message is going to leave me wanting more, or uh-huh. it has left me wanting more, I should say. Very so. good. <laughs>
Very good. And there's a lot of notes encouraging you, specifically Claire, to uh, do this Great American Hero podcast that you threatened to do last episode. Oh, yeah. uh, we've got a domain. We've got everything. It's wonderful. Todd Beardsley is the magic man. <laughs> I do do the editing. I won't deny he that. He does the editing. But I don't dictate the schedule or the format or anything like that. That's all Claire. <laughs> it's all clear. And yeah, it's a real, it's a format I real ca- I came up with on my own, like uh-huh. real innovative. <laughs> it's very, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's called a, a recap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sean writes, I am, I'm writing to encourage you to do the greatest American hero podcast. I loved it as a kid. And now that it's streaming, I've tried to get through a bunch of the episodes. There's all so right. much to explore here. <laughs> now I'm, all right. Now I'm, uh, yep. now I'm amped to do the second and oh, we have a uh, we have a uh, email address too for that, um, and and a Mastodon account. Jesus, I have to go through all of that crap I haven't done yet. Okay, so four. I'm not going to pimp this other podcast all the time, but I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> if pimp you your want podcast, pimp your podcast. It, I mean, honestly, if you just write to us here at hideous at Pots yeah, yeah, Club, it'll it'll come to the same people. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to be like ahead of the curve, if you want to keep your stuff separate, yeah, if you're really organized about your email, write to counselor at hotforteacher.tv, uh, and we will and we will get it. You can follow us on Macedon um, at podsothoth at defcon.social uh, or hotforteacher at defcon.social. <laughs> Um, and as always, uh, it's been lovely, Claire, uh, recording this with you in a hotel room in Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to gambling. Oh, I didn't even tell you. Oh, yeah. When I was done gambling, uh, this, at my last session, I'm not done. No, uh, he's not done. No, I play craps. And I ended my session and I went to go, um, cash out. I got six hundred and sixty-six dollars back. Are you serious? <laughs> it was awesome. Wow! I was like, yes, nice. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, wow. Lord Satan is looking out watching, for you. watching over my gambling, yeah. <laughs> my gambling habit. Uh, it's not an addiction. I, w- I don't think I would even call it a habit. It's not I even mean, much of a habit. I just like doing it. Yeah. Craps is my game. All right. Um, until next time. Oh, and I was asked. Uh, what am I recording next? And I never know what we're recording next. Um, but I'm, I'm leaning towards the rats in the walls, um, because it's another kind of haunted, more of a haunted castle, I guess, than a haunted house. Yeah. Uh, and we saw a, a, a production of the rats in the walls at the London Lovecraft festival. That's right. Where, I don't know why this wasn't obvious, but he artfully worked around the uh, terrible, terrible racism <laughs> uh, in that. And we'll probably do the same thing. So, um, so yeah, next time, that's in the walls. Be there. Good. And I, I'm going to talk about the wolves. You can talk about the wolves in the walls, yep. too. That was my rant. I, was, yeah. I made that with my mouth. <laughs> Not with your eyes. Stop it. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I keep waiting for the reaction. <laughs> All right. 